Philosophical hints and liter literary nudges are useful, but I have never found a written stone on which to stand. When I look at the painted chin and the build-up of realism in Velasco in his Popiness of the Tenth, or a looping passage of paint in a 1976 cocoon, or the bottom of the dress in Rembrandt's woman bathing in a stream, the scrawled text on the tape of Temple of Eunice in ancient Egypt, and even the scratched black inky tire marks made by planes landing on a runway, it's electric. I'm in my personal visual library, and I feel compelled to work. Making art is the most precise way for me to communicate. I'm interested in the language of the in-betweenness of things, the mutational, the contradiction, the state of becoming visible. In science, there's a term called the area of uncertainty that physicists use to explain what amounts to a sort of guesswork, and that seems accurate. Today, you are all graduating from an academy of figurative art. Some might say you are swimming against the tide of contemporary art by being here, but that is for you to decide. Figurative painting and sculpture is as relevant and alive as you make it, and the term figurative art is not terribly helpful in the first place. In painting, it implies an inherent conservatism, a polishing of out by outdated ideas and values. But when you look at the history of humankind, most cultures represent the human form, through fertility goddesses to death masks, it's part of our survival. We have an itching urge and necessity to do it in the face of the inevitability of death and the unknown. Even Islamic art, where the representation of the human form is forbidden, has a script and a calligraphy that seems so bodily in the flow of its forms, the word shapes feel like the drawings of 